and we have a special graduate recognition. And before, before John comes up, I just have to say, like, I did real good through graduation, Lance. I didn't get emotional at all. And as John, you're going to come up and make this presentation to the church. Come on, come on up. Um, Lance, you can come on up too. I just have to say, as your mom, sitting here looking back on you, knowing that your face is the littlest one in the babies are here. That when it was built, you were the youngest one in that nursery. Is really special for me. So, I will let John get from here. Good morning. We're ordering, we are honoring a sort of a long time tradition this morning in our congregation. We have done this for many years to recognize our graduates, and uh, this morning we're very pleased and honored to uh, recognize you, Lance, on behalf of the congregation. <clears throat> I have done this for quite a few years here, not only here, but in our Rotary Club, and I really enjoy finding out uh, things about these graduates that uh, I didn't know. I think things perhaps that you didn't know, and Lance has been very cooperative in giving me some information, and uh, I want to share a little bit about that with you. The first thing that really attracted my attention when I looked over a few of the questions that I asked him is, this is kind of a crossword, uh, excuse me, a crossway, crossroad in his life, uh, a finishing up of one area and beginning a new area. Always interested what they plan to do next. And Lance's plans are that he will be attending the ITU, the International Technical Institute, located in southeastern Pennsylvania at Exton. That's a little village, I think, in the Westchester area. There are a number of these institutes in Pennsylvania, and why would I be so interested in that? Well, about 50 or 60 years ago, this was perhaps one of the most debated topics in our school board that we were considering. We had never had any kind of official technical training vocational school in the nine Cumberland County school districts or the Prairie County schools or Northern York County. And at that time, at that particular time, we felt it was necessary that these kids, not everybody's interested in academic stream. Some people have some real vocational and technical skills to develop. And we proceeded at that time to develop a new campus, put up a new building, equip the building, and it required a lot of capital investment from the various school districts. And I was so, so pleased with Mechanicsburg on our board, after we discussed it, that we would join this group of schools. And the Cumberland Prairie Votech came into being and uh, for so long, we have recognized the valedictorians, the salutatorians, the music kids, but now we can also recognize people that excel in the technical and vocational field. Something else I found out about Lance, <clears throat> his favorite subject is math. I thought, wow, that's a good compliment or friend to take along to technical school with the skills that are needed today. But I found out something else. I asked him what his favorite reading or book was. What was his favorite book? Now, this surprised me for a young man in high school. His favorite book is The Habits of Highly Effective People. Habits, and ha habits of Highly and Effective People. How about that? I think that gives you an idea how interested and well ready he is to go on to his field in technology. I asked him a little bit about his social life. What are you interested, what do you like to do? This really surprised me, but I really, I really am appreciative of what he likes. His favorite social is to have lunch or dinner with his family. How about that? 
I remember those days when our family ate together. I don't believe many families do anymore. They come in and pop the pizza in the microwave and go their way and this way, but Lance enjoys that. He enjoys being with his friends. <clears throat> uh, I also know, and you have probably heard about his uh, capabilities in sports. He's had a great four years at Mechanicsburg, uh, contributing to the swimming program. Uh, he's eclipsed several records made long ago at the high school, are now his records. He was a district medalist in District 3 in swimming, and that qualified him to be a qualifier in state competition. <clears throat> uh, I have a couple sort of mundane questions that I ask him uh, just to finish this out. I wanted to know what his uh, favorite uh, school is. Who's his, who's, who does he root for in the sports world? And, What's his favorite car? Uh, I'm a little biased, but I like both answers. <laughs> Penn State, how about that? <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are. And Ford cars, how about that? <laughs> now, I'm looking down at his Uncle Mike Kennedy this morning, and Mike's dad, and I suppose along the way, those fellas told you, Lance, you haven't really had a car. You have one with a hood, Hemi under the hood. <laughs> Don't believe it. <laughs> okay, we'll get down to serious business now. We do have a recognition a gift we would like to give you, Lance. Uh, we were interested that your reading material was really great, but we have some re re reading material that we're going to give you that I think is the finest reading material in the world. I have found that to be true, and I think as you delve into this Bible and devotional that you will find that your case. So I'm gonna ask Pastor Mike to come up and uh, have prayer. Would you join us, Mike? Oh, Pastor, oh my. Oh boy, did I mess that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's on automatic pilot this morning. That's all right, that's all right. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for this young man. Lord God, you just continue to use him and may he continue to walk the path that you have for him and that Lord God, you watch over him. And again, we just ask for his heart to be soft to your ways and your guidance, Lord God. And again, we're just so grateful uh, for Lance and all that he has done and all that you have allowed him to do, Father, to, uh, to, to think about where he's at today to think about where he's going to be in the future. With your hand upon him, Lord God, all things are possible. And so we just ask your anointing upon him and just your protection upon him. And Lord God, again, your Holy Spirit can need to guide and lead him. And as he is going to be, as he knows about highly effective people, Lord, part of it is you and his life. And the rest of it is going to be his decisions in walking with you. I just thank you, Father, for this time and what the future is going to hold for this young man to bring you honor and glory and just to see what uh, is unleashed in his life. And we just pray these things in the awesome and powerful and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go forth, brother. Bless your hands. Well, this morning we are going to start, <clears throat> if you haven't been in Sunday school, this would be a good time to start Sunday school. If you haven't been in Sunday school for a while, this might be a, a, an interesting time for you to uh, to start, uh, we started today a, uh, it's going to be, it's a 12-week series uh, from Max Licato, I say Licato, Licato, Tomato, Tomato. So anyway, um, he's, uh, it's a book called Unshakable Hope, uh, Looking at the Promises of God. And um, part of that, before we read our scripture, um, Part of this thing is he does and he did is he had this declaration that, that his church says uh, before they, they get started on, on this series. Um, and I looked at it and I said, hey, that's a pretty neat thing to do. So I kind of put it up here. Is it a slide? Ooh, look at that technology. Ain't it great when it works? Thank you, Rick, Sue, all y'all. It's what blessings it is. So what we're going to do is now for the next 12 weeks. I think, I don't think it's changes. I'll look. But anyway, we're going to read this in unison. We're all going to say it all together. It's kind of the focus of what we're going to be doing. 
and looking into the promises of God. So if you would join me, we are building our lives on the promises of God because his word is unbreakable. We do not stand on the problems of life or the pains in life. We stand on the great and precious promises of God. So we're going to try to get into that these next 12 weeks to uh, be excited about, again, the promises of God. What do we, because life is getting pretty shaky sometimes. And uh, he used the image of a boat and the anchor and kind of things like that. And there's all kind of songs out there, you know, my anchor holds, all those different things, kind of things to think about those things. But uh, this morning, we're going to look into Genesis chapter 26, or chapter verse, chapter 1, verse 26. There's a 26 on my paper here. I just put it in the wrong position. <clears throat> uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And we're going to read right on down to uh, 31. So as you get there uh, in the Word of God, uh, whether it be on your phone, old-fashioned Bible, uh, old-fashioned Bible, ain't that something to say that? But the one thing in the Bomesdale Church of God, there is a Bible in a pew near you. So you can grab a hold of one if you didn't bring one. So, Genesis chapter 1, starting in verse 26. It says, Then God said to us, let, uh, God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over everything, cre cre every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing seed plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food and it was and it was so god saw all that he had made and it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day father we thank you for your word we ask your blessing upon the hearing of it open our ears to hear and understand what your spirit has for us lord i just pray that uh, my words get out of the way and we just hear your words for our lives right where we're at in our walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It is interesting to think that when the book of Genesis was wrote, around the area there was different kingdoms. And each kingdom has it, had its own kind of God that their people worshipped. And they erected, they erected statues outside of these areas of these kingdoms. Basically to say that this kingdom, we, they honored this God, such and such, and this is the one that they followed. But here we see that when the living God made the earth, he also put images on his territory. But his images were living Breathing, walking around human beings. Human beings are made in the image of God. Now, nowhere in this series, I want you to think about when I say when I, today's message, that I talk about we are creating the image of God that no person becomes a God. That, that, that does, that's not what we're saying here. We're not saying that man becomes God. I am God because I am the image of God. No, we are image bearers of God. And we will, you will hear and talk, we'll understand that as we go on here. And it was interesting, uh, Max Lucado, he uses the, he, um, 
said that there was somebody, I guess they took time out of their schedule and, and, and sought a student, a, a, a Bible student, I guess, or something. And they were, how many promises of God in the Bible? Well, he came up with the number <coughs> of 7,487, I think the number was. But we're only going to do 12. Okay? And we're only going to, we're going to do 12 in a 12-week series. So for those that you hear big numbers preachers say and go, man, we're going to be here a long time. 7,000? No. Over the series? But in 12 to date? Nope. Just one. So thinking about those things, and we see the first promise here that God made us image bearers, that we are image bearers of God. This is the first promise, that you are stamped with the image of God upon you. God's image. God created us. He created human beings in his own, in his image and likeness. Because what verse 27, God said, he would make human beings in his own image and keep, and he kept his word. See, God keeps his word. If you <clears throat> look on back <clears throat> and think about when, if you can look all through scripture, when was the last time God broke a promise? Never. We break promises all the time. But when did God break a promise last? Never. Right? As we talked about in Sunday school, he, he, he's a promise maker. He's a promise keeper. So we think about those things. And to think about being made in the image of God. Nothing else in creation bears the image of God. Only humans do. Only creation declares the glory, but humans reflect the being of God. <clears throat> the heavens declare the glory of the Lord, the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hands, Psalm 19. From the message, uh, Eugene Peterson's the message, it's a paraphrase of scripture. It says, what a wildly wonderful God, world, God. You made it all with wisdom at your side. Made earth overflow with your wonderful creation. Romans talks about, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. The people talk about, what about people who don't know Jesus? What about all these? We're not, we, there's no excuse to not knowing there's a God. Now, sin has caused problems and science has distorted things and all those things are out there. But we look at creation, the true thing, the heart of man is that there's no, there's no excuse that you don't know there's no a God. It's out there. His eternal power and divine nature <clears throat> has been clearly seen. And this is Paul talking to the Romans way back. Hundreds of years ago, thousands of years, hundreds of years ago. And looking at, it's the same today. To think that all humans bear God's image. It's interesting, there's no exception. There's no exception. So I don't know what background you're from. I don't know what you've been through today. I don't know what you've been through all last week or where you fit in the, in, in, in the pecking order of family or culture or issues in school. School's out now, so you don't have to worry about some of that stuff, right? You don't have to worry about school and the bullies, any of those kind of things. Or, or your, your, you know, I don't know what your self-esteem's like today. But I want to tell you today that wherever you're at, you have to understand that you have the image of God stamped on you. So no matter what other people say, you have to understand and believe that the creator of all creation, he has stamped his image on you for you to be an image bearer of God. Can you grab a hold of that? It doesn't matter, rich, poor, male, female, whether you're from the city, whether you're from the country, whether you're, whatever your ethnicity is. They're image bearers of God. 
Yes, sin has distorted God's image in human beings. He's distorted that. Sin has done that. Satan, as soon as he came in, if you read, I just read that section, just thinking about this section of scripture that I read, and what's God say? I give you everything. I give you all this to eat. I give all this to the animals, to for the other rest of creation, to take care of things and to do this. You have all this. And we turn to Genesis chapter 3. He said, don't eat of this one tree. What would Satan do? He used that one tree to go, did God really say that? And you might leave here today going, did God really? Did, Pastor Bob said, I got the image of God. I'm an image bearer of God. Does he really mean that? Does he really say that? Does God really? It says it in the word. You need to believe it. And it's true. Because you might not feel that way. But you got to believe it's true. Because see, sin has messed up our, mural, our, our morals. The moral purity has been tainted. Our intellect is polluted by false ideas, ideas of, you know, we drank the Kool-Aid of it's all you. You know, it, it's pr- promote yourself, promote, promote self, self-help, self all this. Rather than promoting God. And yes, there's sometimes it's hard to to discern, understand the image of God. It's like what what does that look like? I mean, look we look at our society, we look at media, we look at all these different things, and going, man, that don't look like God. If that looks like that, don't look like the God of the Bible I know, right? I mean, it doesn't. There's there's issues out there in our world that it's not we are not bearing the image of God, and it's because of sin. But in the midst of that issues, do not ever think that God has descended his promise, because he hasn't. In Christ Jesus, you are an image bearer of God. Because God intends to, for human beings to grow in our role. We're supposed to be growing in our role as image bearers of God. And, and it's like Max said, it's like, you know, the, the, the I call it the, the $2 word or the $5 word, inflation, right? It used to be $2 words, the big words. Now I think they're probably worth about $5. But anyway, salvation, that's what it is. You grow in your image of God. How do you grow? You grow in the image of God through knowledge and wisdom of God. So we got to be in the word because that's how we find out about our God that we, are, that we have the image of in us. Paul writes, and we all, when we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Second Corinthians 3.18. So we're contemplating, contemplating the glory of the Lord. What is it like? And to think about, he wants to transform you. He wants to change you. Culture tells us, though, we got to look for the inside, right? Your, in, your value comes from, it's, it's you. It's, it's, it's inside ourselves where we find value. It tells us, well, the money, position, prestige, your fame, your status, your church attendance. You can have all the bulletins all year long. Where are you growing in the image of God? Good deeds. But these things do not. They don't do it. What's God tell us? He tells you that you are significant simply because we've been made in his image. That's it. It's not more complicated than that. We make it a lot more complicated, and and I'm the first one to, to jump out and go, this isn't easy for me either. But to think there's something of God in each of us. There's something of God in you. He stamped his name on our hearts. He breathed life into our lungs. So growing in God's Im- as image bearer of God should transform our visions. We should see ourselves differently. 
When's the last time you thought of yourself as a loved child of God? In the midst of life, if you sat down and said, I am a loved child of God. Romans, or 1 John 3, 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. So how's the world going to get to know him? It's going to be through us because we are the image bearers of God. And if we, we want to know what God's like, are we like God to be growing in that situation? Because that's what it is. It, this is Paul. This is John talking to the church. Again, these letters in scripture are not just there. They are there for the church. They're for the church past tense, presence, and future. And so we're hearing from from God through the Holy Spirit, because that's how God, that's how Scripture was wrote, right? Through God, they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So as God carried along by the Holy Spirit, this is what he told them to write. And so it's for us today as well. And to think about this, to being the image of God upon us. Dearly loved children. And he's telling them, that is what we are. Do we see ourselves differently? Do we see others differently? Because this would change our, this should change our whole outlook on others. Because every human being deserves dignity and respect because he or she is a God, God's image bearer. You might not know because you don't know Jesus. You don't understand it yet. But the ultimate idea for all is that they become to continue to grow in the image bearing of Christ. And so just think of what people would think about what are inner cities and some of the different things that are going on in our world that people would understand and have the dignity and respect that I'm an image bearer of God. God loves me. He created me with this image within me. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't we treat each other differently? Maybe think about shooting somebody because they thought it's an image bearer of God. I, I thought I'm not going to do that. I had to respect somebody. Respect life. Maybe not just going so much as shooting somebody as much as respecting somebody. Maybe talking about somebody. Maybe you cut back on talking about someone because you realize the dignity and respect that is in Scripture. So we're to grow in knowing God, our Heavenly Father. John 17, 3. Now this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's part of our image-bearing responsibility. We are to grow in making God our Father known to others. Psalm 105. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Do we do that? Hopefully we do. The neat thing about all of this is I look at it, and hope for me, and I say this a lot, is like, it can always be better, right? It can always be worse, but we can always get better. We always got room for improvement, amen? Amen, I'm so glad about that. So how do we apply some of this? What do we do about it? Well, think about it. As we have several generations here in this church this morning, and a lot of your, your kids, the characteristics of the children, they, their parents, because of the genetics, right? We see family traits, right? Well, I can tell you're one of them because <laughs> the way, you know, I'm not putting a name out there, but you can tell, right? Because of the actions and because of the, the, the genetics. In the same way that we're created to take after our heavenly father to demonstrate his wisdom, his love, his grace, his kindness, his forgiveness. But yes, sin has turned us inwardly. Dulling our intellect, polluting our, and messing up our morality, our morals. But even in the light of our sin, God has not 
re, 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 revoked his promise to all of this world. He still creates people in his image to bear his likeness and reflect his glory. Are you being made into God's image? You are. The pursuit we are to be in growing as we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is, uh, if you don't hear anything else, I want you to listen to this. Everybody pay attention. In the eyes of God, you are worth dying for. To be image bearers of God. That's what he did. He sent Jesus to die. Let that sink into your heart to think about if you think you're not worth it, God said, no, you're worth dying for. I sent my son to, for you to, to have eternal life, but also for you to be an image bearer of me, to learn what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ through, for, through, through life and to see what it's like to, to have him watch over you and to see this promise to be upon you, to live as dearly loved children of God. We were made by God to know him and to make him known. It's interesting, children, you remember this, and we still see, see kids, what's one of the things they do? Look at me, look at me, look at me ride my tricycle, look at me ride. You know, we're on the trampoline, you know, they're jumping, hey, mom, look at me, look at me jump up and down, and look at me do this, and, you know, first time swimming, look at me swim, you know, I, well, I'm not drowning, you know, you don't have to come get me, but, but to think about that, and we think that's cute, right? We, that's okay for kids, right? I mean, it is, that's cool, kids, look at me, look at me. The struggle we have, though, is us humans, us adults. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me driving this fancy car. Look at me with this promotion and this position I have. Look at me. I'm wearing all these fancy clothes. I got the fashion. Look at me. Man, I, these muscles work out. Man, I spend time. Not really. That's, that's not true. But I'm just, that's an analogy. You know that. So I just, <laughs> you know that, but. So it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to grow up and say, look at me. Look at God. Instead of promoting self, we promote God. Because we are image bearers. The promise is there. This is a promise. This is unshakable hope. You might not have any hope because of a life situation or whatever you're going through. But to understand now that you're an image bearer of God, that should give us hope. The God who made the creation, we go out here, we travel, it's beautiful sunshine, everything's nice and green and flowers all over the place. The God, the same God that made all that and sustains all that is the same God that says, you are to bear my image. You are created in my image. Let people know that. That we, people are supposed to see the image maker. Because we have to understand, here it comes, that God sent his son to die on the cross. And so it's like, and he used this analogy. I really like this. If we think about who we are, who you were in Christ Jesus, and you ever, I know a lot of you do that magnet, you, you do well, geocache, you find stuff. But when you do those metal detector things, right, you beep, 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 you find something, you dig it up, and you go, oh, wow, uh, what the heck is this? But you start cleaning it off. You get that dirt off of it. And you wipe it and you start cleaning it. That's what God's doing to us. He's kind of taking us and you're all dirty. Believe it or not, I know you took a shower this morning before you went to church. Everybody gets Sunday night showers anyway. But anyhow, Saturday night showers. But anyhow, God's like, he's working on us. That smudge and stuff we got on us, right? And he's working on that. Sometimes it's kind of tough some days, but he's cleaning that up to find a shiny coin. And before you know, wow, you know what this is worth? I thought it was just a big old, just a hunk of metal. But here, it's a shiny coin. It might, it might be worth who knows what. I believe God's doing that to us. You're his image bearer. He's working on you to wipe you clean, to make you clean, and make you stronger, and to be his image bearer. Give him glory that people see him in you. 
so that they could understand then. To give them the opportunity to know Jesus and become, to that they may understand it. They are created in the image of God. So just think, someday you might, this week, you might run into somebody that's down on their luck. They might be bummed out. And one of your family members or someone don't have much self-worth, something's going on in their life. You can just speak into them about being, you know, you're creating the image of God. God has a plan and purpose for you to shine through you, to use you with your gifts and talents and who you are. So today we make a choice. We're closing with these two questions. Will we embrace our role as God's image bearers? And the second one is, will we live to reflect God to others? Now, I stopped in, in, in junior church. Me and Rick had to make a change because we need technical help up in adult class. But they talked about reflections in junior, in, in down there in the little guys. Sam, you talked about reflections. You had a mirror and stuff like that. And so to understand that, that well, will we reflect God to others? Those are the two questions we leave with today. We just meditate on God's word to know that the, first, the very first promise God gives us, the very first book of the Bible, the very first chapter, that you are an image bearer of your creator. And to walk in that today, that you are dearly loved children of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we are... Did your plan, your promise that we are image bearers of you, our Heavenly Father. And to think of this song, Lord, if we bow down before you, we allow you to be known, you lift us up. Awesome. What a plan. Walk with us today, this Lord. Lord, we know you will go with us, and you will not forsake us. May we see you and learn more about being an image bearer of our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen.